Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're gonna to be talking about what might be the ultimate mountain bikers mini truck, and that is the Ford Maverick. Could this be the replacement for the Tacoma for many of you out there? I don't know, we're gonna get into it and talk about all the reasons we love the Ford Maverick. All right, everyone, so my name is Drew, and for those of you who are vehicle fans may not be familiar, we are a mountain bike and electric mountain bike media network for the most part, testing and reviewing bikes and bike accessories. Um, and for our mountain bike audience out there, why are we doing this video? Well, you may know we've been van fans for a really long time. Um, I was looking for something with all wheel drive, something I could put a baby seat in, and I could drive as kind of a daily commuter that got a little better gas mileage and was just easier to get around in town, find parking spots and get my little two and a half year old girl in and out of the vehicle. So that led me on a search for an affordable, uh, reliable all wheel drive vehicle that could fit my riding gear, camera equipment, charge e-bikes, could fit the crew in, and again, wasn't overly expensive. Um, I will admit, I am a Ford fan. This is not a Ford endorsed, paid for video. I bought this truck, um, and again, that's why cost was important. So really quick, I'm gonna fly over some of the things that really drew me into the Ford Maverick. First off, they started around $22,000. Um, they come in a variety of options. You can either do a hybrid or the turbocharged EcoBoost motor, which is what I got, and is the only way you can get all-wheel drive currently. Um, I did get the tow package, so I've got 4,000 pounds of towing capacity. Uh, so either I'm putting heavy-duty bike racks on here or pulling a UTV on a trailer, anything like that. That was enticing for me. Moving into the bed, I can fit four bikes across the back, uh, and they fit in here on the tailgate pad. Still have a little bit of room. Uh, depending on how many people and how much gear we're moving, I can put in a couple of bikes and gear bags and then still put a, a hitch rack on the back. You've got really cool bed features, and that was something I liked about the Maverick a lot. Um, obviously, Tacomas and other larger trucks have more bed space. They are longer, they are bigger but they cost a lot more. They don't get nearly the gas mileage, and yes, it is also slower. So the Maverick is cheaper, faster, I would say more comfortable, and an overall nicer driving experience. So let's move into some of those features that really separate the Maverick, in my opinion. So this is where all the hamsters live that produce the 250 horsepower in the EcoBoost four-cylinder. Um, I've not owned or driven a four-cylinder vehicle, at, well, ever, actually. Um, but uh, it is it is a pretty fun little truck to drive, and as I keep it longer, I might be making a little bit of power upgrades to it and see. Um, but all in all, get up and go passing, you know, getting this thing up to speed to get around trucks on the highway or, you know, um, you know merging onto freeways. Dude, this thing has got plenty of power. It's actually quite impressive. So. Uh, you know, I guess I am comparing it to an Econoline van, which uh, is not exactly a rocket ship, but uh, I think it's pretty dang quick and um, it's faster than a Tacoma. Did I say that already? So before we move to the interior, uh, we're gonna focus on the bed, right? Which is kind of the utilitarian part of the vehicle. Um, right here in the back, we teamed up with Built Right and got some really cool Molly panels for the inside of the bed. Uh, in here, I've got shock pump, tools, uh, sealant, chain lube, all that stuff, which is really neat. Here's some little recovery straps, uh, tow hooks, but behind that, you've got some cool storage, and then down below, even more hidden storage. I got uh, another tow strap down there in case this little unibody all-wheel drive vehicle gets in over its head, which is very possible. I will say, as far as off-roading, the ground clearance is only about one inch less than some of the Tacomas. Obviously, you know, when you get into TRDs and lifts and all the other stuff, that will change, but about eight and a half inches, is that right, Dustin? Uh, yeah. I did put some larger oversized tires, which I'll give you the details on in just a moment. Um, but yeah, this thing will definitely get going. Snow, muck, mush, uh, mud. I've had it through everything this winter here in Central Oregon. So here on the other side, again, we've got more of the Built Right Industries panels with their quick clamps. Um, here, what's really cool is I've got a bike pump right now. I can undo this and put a shovel if I'm gonna go out and do some trail building. In here, you've got an AC 120 volt, uh, 400 watt, uh, outlet, 
really cool bed lighting. Um, here I can hook up a power strip. So if I'm driving with three or four e-bikes, I can plug them into that power strip and, and charge a couple of e-bikes or trickle charge them on the drive out to the trail or leave them charging while we're getting some lunch. Other really cool features for like Overlander or those types of people that are gonna be like wanting to run wiring or other accessories. Inside here, there's easy access to wiring. So if you wanna connect uh, lighting, if you're gonna put a canopy or anything else on there, they make it really easy. And I think something that's really cool about the Maverick and what Ford did here is it's a four and a half foot bed, but they worked really hard to make it useful. And some of the neat tricks and features, like there's YouTube videos that show all of the different features in, in the bed. Um, I'm just gonna quickly highlight a couple that are really cool. Essentially, if you look at how there's these little depressions there in the bed, uh, what you can do is run, I think a four or a two by six, sorry, across there and create like a little micro platform above so you can have two layers of storage. Something else that's neat is the width of this and this, um, this little wheel well here on both sides, it'll fit a full sheet of plywood. And the bed has sort of a, a halfway tilt up spot. So essentially what you can do is you just take this clip out of here and you put it up to this position and now you'll see where the tailgate is laying down at is flat and perfect with the height of the wheel well. So you can load up full sheets of plywood in a four and a half foot bed. To me, that's really cool. Um, and again, there's a couple other features like up here in the front. If you look at this little cutout here, right? This is for the two by six to build platform across. That will fit another piece of wood if you wanna do two by four or two by six to build your own bike rack across. The wood can locate and sit in there nicely. So it's just a nod to Ford paying attention to the DIY mentality of the Maverick owner, right? They want something that's affordable. They're gonna probably wanna save money in other places like building their own racks, doing their own projects at home. So that to me was really cool and something I liked a lot about this truck. Uh, another thing that I added onto this truck was the Gator roll-up soft tunnel cover. Uh, a lot of the time I'm not driving and transporting bikes around and obviously just with the bad weather and stuff we have here, it's really nice to be able to roll this up, fold it over, not have snow collecting in here, or transport other stuff and keep it safe and protected from the elements. And being that it is a small cab, um, you know, it, it allows me to roll it just halfway if I wanna put a bike or two in here and protect our gear bags or keep stuff dry as we're driving. So now that we've checked out the small but capable bed, let's check out two other features before we move to the inside. So on my particular XLT uh, with the black appearance package, I did get the tow package upgrade. Um, so it's got a two inch receiver, which most of them do. I think normally it comes with a 2000 pound towing capacity as compared to the 4000 this one has. Uh, but along with the two inch receiver, you've got all you know your, your plugins. So trailer, lighting, all that stuff, brake is really cool. I think for a truck this small to have uh, trailer brake control is pretty trick like that's super neat in my opinion and obviously you're not you know gonna be towing a massive speedboat but um, I think the essential stuff that most mountain bikers would want to carry or haul around this will get the job done so I decided to go with the relatively new BF Goodrich trail terrain TA tire um, you know I wanted something that didn't look overly aggressive and gnarly because it's not an overly aggressively gnarly truck uh, I also wanted to maintain fuel economy the best I could but wanted a three peak rated tire, something that would do well in the snow and ice. And I did go up in size quite a bit. So um, you got a 245-60 R18. I do think I probably could have gone a little bit bigger, but again, with snow and mud buildup that we get here and ice, I just thought it'd be safer to have a little more clearance and not have any rubbish issues. And uh, keep it in line with the tire size I selected being 245-60 uh, 18 the turning radius on this vehicle is uh, 20 feet or so. Um, I wanted to make sure I could get full lock, especially with snow, ice, and other gunk that gets caught and build up, um, not have any, any damage or issues here, which I've got plenty of. So um, yeah, I'm sure there are people that go higher. There's a really easy and simple lift that you can install, which I've thought about doing, but um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, wasn't high on my priority list, so it hasn't been done just yet. 
All right, moving into the interior. Apologize, it's a little dirty, but we have had uh, some inclement weather here. Um, I would say I, I've spent a lot of time in Tacomas. Obviously, being a mountain biker, it's hard to not know a bro with a Tacoma. Um, I think comfort-wise, the Maverick takes the cake a little bit. The seat feels like it's a little bit higher off the ground. Tacomas have kind of like a really low seated feeling, so your legs kind of feel like they're sitting out. Um, I would say the comfort of the seats is probably a little bit nicer as well. Uh, and surprisingly, for how small the truck is, the cab itself, as far as like leg room, width, all that sort of stuff, is really close to the Tacoma. In some dimensions, this might be an inch bigger. In other dimensions, I think shoulder width specifically, this in the back seat might be a little narrower, but uh, by not more than like two inches, it might be about an inch or so. Moving into some of the other creature comforts and you know niceties, I really like the Mavericks for climate control. Uh, again, the creature comforts. This is kind of a, I got pretty lucky in this being available. I know these are really hard to get, but this was kind of like the dream package that I would have liked. So um, heated steering wheel, heated seats, you know, with the Ford app, I can start the car in the house. It'll warm up seats and steering wheel. So when I get in, you know, on these really cold mornings, it's all nice and climate controlled in here. It'll sense the temperature and adjust. Uh, navigation screen pairing and syncing with everything is super nice. Um, let's see, storage space right i mean it's a small truck but uh ford has done a really good job with giving usable storage space in smart ways right so if you look at like the door panels the amount of places and ways that you can put water bottles or other things that you want to store you got you know large cup holders here storage there on top something that's also really neat is uh, i believe ford made all the files available online so there's a ton of people or if you own a 3d printer yourself you can go online and customize accessories things that you want to make um, you know they make everything from like larger oversized storage trays to you know these little door panels that are held on you know by these allen head screws you can print those you can get them in custom colors and really trick the truck out and customize it to your own suiting uh, being that it is all-wheel drive, it has uh, a number of different driving modes from, you know, eco to slippery conditions to sand, snow, etc. So you can modify that as well as traction, auto start on and off, um, you know, which I guess they say helps a little bit with the fuel economy, which speaking of, even though this is uh, 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds, which is uh, over a full second faster than the Toyota Tacoma, um, it still gets better gas mileage with that turbocharged four-cylinder uh, EcoBoost that I have in here. So um, I definitely have noticed cold, cold temperature like we've had. The fuel economy drops. I have noticed when I run 89 or higher grade fuel, fuel economy improves. Um, if I drive this thing at like 45 to 55 miles an hour on kind of like some mellower highways, I can get this thing over 30. Um, but I would say more consistently, I'm seeing low 20s. Uh, and that's, you know, just kind of normal average driving. Um, I don't accelerate super hard, but I do tend to drive a little bit faster. So um, take that for what it's worth. Again, I also have a little bit more aggressive tires. Kind of talking about features and packages, obviously prices can range greatly, right? From the entry level, I don't know, fleet truck all the way up to like a King Ranch Lariat, you know, whatever top of the line model is. Um, you know, this being an XLT with the blackout, you know, appearance package, it's, it is a bit of an upgraded model. So I got it for $32,000. Uh, the Toyota Tacomas start at 36,000, right? For the turbocharged four cylinder. And I would imagine that that entry level package is not going to be anywhere near as nice, uh, as what I've got here for the 32. Cause at that point I'm, I'm nearly at $10,000 in upgrades on this Maverick, which makes it a lot nicer cab and driver experience. Um, so again, cheaper than a Tacoma, faster than a Tacoma, as or more comfortable than a Tacoma. Did I say better fuel mileage yet? Um, the, yeah, for me, there was a lot of stuff. Does it off-road as well as a four-wheel drive Tacoma? Probably not. This is a unibody, all-wheel drive truck. I get that. Um, but some people don't go off-roading and they don't get really gnarly. And you know what? I've seen videos of guys who put the little two-inch lift on this thing and they they get on, you know, they, they hit some pretty decent terrain and it gets them out into the backcountry just fine. 
But again, if you're all you're doing is shuttling, you know, logging or forest roads, this thing is buttery smooth on washboards or logging roads. We've done a lot here in Oregon. Um, and it's got more than enough ground clearance to get me over all the stuff that I need to do. And um, yeah, gets me there comfortably with pretty good fuel economy. So all in all, I think the Ford Maverick is a truck well worth considering. Um, let's move into the back seat just so you can see what that looks like for people in the back. All right, so back seat comfort. Uh, I am five foot 11, as you can see. My knees are not hitting the seat. Uh, even with the seat in the driving position that I find comfortable, I've had guys that are six foot up to six two here. They're not hitting their heads on the roof, right? I still have about you know four and a half inches or so space above my head, and um, you know I right now have a baby seat in here, so it's a little bit slim and tight. So when I've got you know the kid in here and two other adults, you know the only really tight part is the width of this baby seat here but when that baby seat's out four people are super comfy five is is a tight but you know there's not many small or you know mini or compact trucks where five adults isn't super tight but leg room is great you can get your legs up under the seat just fine to stretch them out a little bit and again you're not hitting your head you're not hitting your knees so super comfortable more storage here in the door panels uh, you've got 120 USB-C USB and again, Ford makes a lot of really cool files available. So if you want to 3D print more accessories, another cup holder back here, all stuff that you can do. This seat does tilt down and forward. Um, There's some cool stuff that people have done there. And uh, yeah, overall, pretty solid experience in the back seat for most people. See ya. All right, everybody, thank you guys for coming along and checking out my Ford Maverick, uh, the tiny little commuter truck that could. Um, it's not perfect, it's not an off-road rig, I get it, but it is extremely practical. It gets pretty good mileage, it's got power, it's super comfortable to drive, easy to drive, park in tight spots, and it fits me, the crew, and all of our bikes and gear. Um, so again, I really like the truck, I'm a fan. I know there's gonna be people out there that'll probably light it up and say it's not really a truck and it's just a unibody car with a bed on it, and that's fine. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter what it is. It does the job I need it to do and it does it well, and it does it for a pretty affordable price. So um, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Again, we were not paid or endorsed. I made this video after buying and owning this truck for a few months because I really like it. And I think it's something that uh, is worth sharing with you guys if you're looking for a newer vehicle that does all the things I described above. So thanks again for watching everybody and for all the truck people out there, if you wanna check out some more mountain bike videos, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to see you out on the trails. Thanks, we'll see you later.